They took the best of the typhoon and the tempest and put it all together. Look at that beautiful four-point hesitation goal. This was the last propeller-driven fighter that the Royal Navy ever used. And it is, was powered by the English engine, which was a Bristol Centaurus 18-cylinder sleeve valve radial engine, produced about 2,400 horsepower. Well, the engines were in short demand because at that time, they were already on the threshold of the jet airplane. So the engine was very rare. So instead of using the English engine, the right 3350 American engine seemed like a perfect bait because of the scarcity of the Bristol Centaurus. So this airplane is powered with the right 3350, which is a cubic inch displacement and puts out approximately 2,500 to 2,550 horsepower. Now, Brian, smoke generators became a, a functional thing, and he builds those every day of the week up at our place in Northern California in a place called Ione. And uh, you probably saw the other Sea Fury in some of the lineup today and the, today some of the days earlier flybys. And that was, of course, the famous race number eight, Dreadnought. Well, this is the sister ship in that airplane, and it is Argonaut. So the two Sanders Sea Furies, you probably, if you've ever been to Reno at the air races, you've seen us out there on the course. Well, Brian has got this routine that his dad established. He's polished it a little. Look at that big, beautiful smoke ring out there. Well, that was from the wingtip vortice. As the air, as the wing goes through the air, and the smoke gets caught up in the afterflow, and that is what you're seeing. Now, a little bit later on, Brian is going to slow it down, and even though we've got a surface wind of about 15 knots, we're going to see some very, very unusual smoke patterns. Brian's utilizing all 2,500 horsepower there, up over the top, topping off pretty close to 5,000 feet up there, doing a roll at dead center of the loop. Right on around, Noah's coming down now. A little bit back on the power. And he is pulling about five to six Gs at the bottom. Pretty hard to keep your chin on your chest there. Well, you know, the guys up at Reno, on the race course, they're pulling pretty much at a constant four to five. There you go. Hey, we're knocking right on the door of 500 miles an hour. Now watch this, and Brian's got enough steam, as soon as he gets a vertical, he will begin a vertical roll on, around. Come on, Brian, one more half. That a boy. Right up the top, taking it right on up to about 5,500 feet. All right, let the now our two smoke generators putting out a beautiful screen of smoke. Now he's going to go out and set turbine. And the slower the airplane and the heavier the airplane, the more disturbance that you get following the airplane's path of flight. Now you see him; he's down to about down to about 120 miles an hour indicated holding it there with a little power. Now you can see the smoke comes out nice and straight, but once it gets back there to where that turbulence is, then it starts doing all kinds of crazy things. Now there you see the smoke and it's doing its thing right there. That's what wake turbulence is. Uh, after Frank, sometimes, here he is for that photo pass. Ah, looking real, real good. That beautiful.